Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we are looking at some new thermal cameras on the market. And uh, thermal cameras, well you don't use them every day, but when you need them, they're really handy to have. And there are some really cool new products um, available. We're going to do a diagnosis on my very own 1979 Yamaha XS750. I've noticed that it's a little sluggish to crank. Doesn't really want to fire up using the electric start. Uh, I think there is a voltage drop somewhere between the regulator rectifier assembly and the battery. So the battery might not be getting charged enough. So we'll do a quick diagnosis. Uh, and to find the voltage drop, I want to try using a thermal camera. Now, thermal cameras are really great for um, finding the source of the voltage drop because that connector or uh, whatever wire heats up if there's current going through it and if there's a voltage drop it will, you know it's a resistance so it consumes power really neat a lot of other uh, uses for thermal cameras like parasitic draws again same concept if there's a current going through something it's going to warm up if there's a if there's something consuming power uh, HVAC systems uh, you name it, there are a lot of different uses. So t let's take a look at the thermal cameras that we're going to try out today and see which one uh, is the best bang for the buck. Alright, so we'll, we're reviewing four units today and you can see these things are getting smaller and smaller. Uh, they're all based on connecting it to your smartphone like you know I have an Android Samsung phone uh, and that's fantastic because you don't have to worry about battery life it's super easy to take pictures or videos right on your phone um, so the standalone cameras I haven't touched one in in a while because these things are really the bees knees and they're getting really affordable two to three hundred dollar range for all these four cameras so First we have the Top Don TC View. We have featured this in another review. I love this thing. Uh, HIK Micro Mini 2. The Infrared TS or T2S Plus. Looks like this. And then the Infrared P2 Pro. It is tiny. It's like your thumbnail. It, it's, it really blows my mind how small these things are getting. So, we'll discuss the pros and cons of these and see how they perform on, you know, just getting a good image, finding the voltage drop, because at the end of the day, you want to put it to work and you want to solve problems with it. So, the two main categories we're going to look at is image quality and the interface. So, these four cameras, they all have their own app that, you know, you download from the Google Play Store. And some, some of the apps are really good, some of them are a little primitive, and we'll see if they're easy to use. And uh, basically they'll show which camera is the most user friendly. Uh, so let's uh, get to diagnosing the bike. Alright, so we have 12.6 volts, this is a fresh AGM battery, it's less than two years old. And turn the key on, headlights off. We're down to 12.2 volts. See, it's dropping a little bit. Let's crank it. Okay, it started. Eleven point Give it a little choke. So 10.6, it doesn't have enough juice to actually fire the ignition coil and the headlight you know, stays on. So you have to turn the key off, turn it back on. Back to 11.9. Same light a little bit. Alright, so I put my meter 
on the red wire coming out of the rectifier. We'll see, we're at 14 volts right now. Can I rev it up? Fourteen point seven. If we go back to the battery, we're at thirteen point five. So it looks like there's about one volt drop between the battery and the rectifier. We can prove that just by connecting the lead right here. About one volt. So when the bike is off, it's not charging, there's zero voltage drop. So one volt is not good, so this battery isn't being charged at 14.5, it's only being charged at 13, a little over 13, like 13.5. And the next time you, know, you try to start it, the battery isn't quite fully charged. So where is this voltage drop? Um, somewhere between here, the red wire goes into the harness, and then on this side, Here's the red wire, comes to here, and splices into the main red battery cable. This is the starter solenoid. So let's get the thermal cameras out and see if something's warming up where it's not supposed to. All right, let's start with the top on TC view. I've had this camera for a while. I've used it many times. Um, so on my phone, I have a little strip of soft Velcro here, and on each of these cameras, I put the, you know, other kind of rough Velcro so it sticks to my phone. So the TC View does not come with a cable, an extension cable like all these other cameras. You need a cable if you have a case and it's, you know, the port is recessed, there's no way you can just stick the camera on there. You need an extension cable. It's not a big deal. I got this cable on Amazon or whatever. Had to file it down to fit. Um, but it would be nice if they included a cable. So let's plug in our camera. I just stick it on the back of the phone. And Sometimes it automatically opens the app. We want to go to Top Down TC View. Okay. Ooh, let's update to the latest version. Maybe it's even better. It right, takes a minute or a few seconds. So the Top Don app is actually very good. Um, there, there are a few features that you're looking for in a thermal imaging app on your phone. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, the picture is inverted because I have my camera positioned like this. Okay, uh, what you want to do is go to settings and just rotate it. So now we're right side up, there's the image, and what I like about the Top Don app is you instantly have the, a nice scale here. You have the minimum and maximum cursors, little points that are floating around showing you the temperature. See, there's a cold spot right in the middle is, you know, right in the middle, and the hot spot's right there. So, this is all you need, and to take pictures, easy as hitting the button, and you got a picture. Uh, let's try it on the motorcycle, see if we can find anything that's uh, heating up. All right, here we go. So we got one volt. Voltage drop. We 
definitely have some warm wires. If you want to take a picture of that. Okay. Look at that. That wire is getting pretty warm. That's 40 C. One volt voltage drop. Thirteen point nine volts here. Fourteen point seven at the rectifier. So we got some pictures. Let's uh, try the next camera. One thing I noticed about the top down app here is once you rotate the image around and you know you do something with your phone, now you're upside down again. So I'm wondering if if we have to turn that off and then rotate the image on the app. Okay, so that's not a big deal. You just got to turn off your auto rotate on the phone and it won't mess with the app. Last test here is resolution. So I'm just, uh, I want to see like these binder, double binder rings. Can we see a good picture? You know, can it distinguish between the rings? So right there, you can see. You know they're kind they're kind of blurring together, but it's not terrible. So let's take a picture of that, and we'll compare it to the other cameras. This is more like a macro close-up view. All right, up next the HIK Micro Two. It does come with its own little cable here. And the app doesn't let you rotate the image, so you have to position the camera this way and stretch the cord. You know, <clears throat> it is stretchy, so it's not a big problem. You position it kind of like that. Okay. So let's open up the HIK Micro Viewer. Go to Smartphone Module. Restart that. All right, here we go. All right, and there's the picture on the HIK Micro. Um, so this app, it's decent. It likes to calibrate itself all the time. It does show the scale and the pointers, the readouts are right there, hot, cold, and center. Uh, so that's nice. Take a picture. Easy as that. You can do video. Um, pretty nice. One cool feature about the Mini 2 app is you can do fusion. Now fusion is the image from your phone and the image from the infrared camera. So for example, uh, if you want to align them Fusion settings, you have to take a picture like this and then basically see there's my computer and I want to kind of sync it with the infrared image like that. Okay, save. And now you'll have both the optical and the infrared image kind of overlapping each other. So that's a neat feature that none of the other apps offer. Uh, it does make for cool pictures. The alignment will never be ideal. You can see my uh, the thermal image of my hand and the actual image is, you know, it's pretty close. So that's a neat feature, but usually you just want the infrared image anyways. 
Uh, let's see how it performs on our diagnosis. All right, we got the bike running. Drop. You will see as you charge about one volt. Okay, so we see the cable there getting a little warm. What about this one here? I think this is going to be our problem. This connection right there. Okay, we've got an image. Alright, now I'm trying to look at the little binder rings. You can see how often it's calibrating. And the macro resolution here is not nearly as good as the top down. You can see the individual, you can't differentiate that these are double rings. You just see bright spots here. It doesn't really matter how close or how far I am from those. So the, the resolution here, all these cameras, by the way, are... 256 by 192, so they have the same number of pixels in the infrared sensor. However, there is a difference in the lenses. So, for macro versus, you know, far away, far away, usually they're, they're all pretty decent. But if you're up close, some cameras you can't differentiate fine details. So, so far the Top Don has, does have better image quality, and the apps are pretty much the same. And this one has the Fusion feature. That's the HIK Micro 2. Next up is the Infrared T2S Plus. Again, it comes with a cable. And the app here is the least sophisticated, meaning you can't flip the image. Uh, there's no temperature scale. The only thing you can do is kind of you put a point in the middle and it'll tell you the temperature of the point. Um, so the app here is uh, definitely takes takes a hit on just features. However, the image quality, this is the only camera that comes with a manual focus on the lens. And you guys will be able to see how well that works. So for focusing in on the keyboard there, you can get it really crisp. I mean, this is really <laughs> impressive. Look at that. And if we look at our little binder rings, look how well you can differentiate the, uh, the individual rings. So I can adjust the, the focus here. Man, that is crisp. That is some amazing image quality. If only the app was better. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, right? So if we're doing a far image now, you'll see the motorcycle's out of focus. But if I adjust that, it's kind of hard to do with one hand while holding the camera. Let's see here. So that far away image is actually very nice. Let's see if we can spot that wire. Oh. So that wire cools down pretty quickly. So let me run the bike for a second. All right, check it out. You see the hot spot by the battery.
There it is. Yeah, that connection is definitely heating up. Now when you're this close, you can always adjust the focus to get it, the image just amazing. Look at that. That's really neat. All right. All right, last but not least is the tiniest thermal camera I've ever seen in my life. The Infrared P2 Pro. So let's plug it in. Put it right here. And let me just start the app from scratch. P2 Pro app. Now this thing comes with a magnetic macro lens. So if we have the macro lens on, we come here and we're really close, the image quality is just outstanding. You can easily see the uh, individual binder rings clearer than probably any of the other cameras. However, if you're usually for automotive diagnostics, you kind of want to take a far away picture of you know your dash or something that's drawing consuming power. Um, it's okay. I'd say that the image quality here, just with the regular, you know, without the macro lens, is probably a little worse than the the other cameras um, let's see we do have a scale that's nice and we can rotate and flip the image and it'll remember so right here I have it set at 180 if you set it at zero it'll actually you know be upside down so it's nice that the app remembers your settings here I like that and you can flip the image you can mirror the image for whatever reason if you want um, but otherwise you know pretty standard photo video whatever you want to do so let's try this on on the bike make sure we can see that hot wire all right bike is running That's why you have a case. <laughs> there it is. It's a very, actually pretty decent image of the hot wire. You can snap a picture of that. And all this stuff. All right, so now let's uh, draw some conclusions of which of these cameras I would carry in my work truck for actual diagnostics in the field. By the way, keep in mind uh, when you're buying a camera, what accessory does it come with? So the TC view will not come with an extension wire, which is kind of a shame, but it does come with a nice case, uh, and you know, that's it. Well thought out app, good, solid camera. HIK Micro does come with a case and an extension wire, that's awesome. The Infrared T2S Plus also comes with a little case and the extension wire. Also a cap for protecting your lens. And then the Infrared P2 Pro only comes with a little baggie. Uh, and this thing is so small, I would almost be afraid to lose it. Amazing how small that is. Um, 
and let's take a look at the prices of all of these like I said they're in the two to three hundred dollar range and then see if one of them comes out on top or or what all right so here's my opinion on these cameras uh, so basically I have two categories here hardware and software hardware includes image quality you know ease to set up and then the software is the app basically how useful is it when you're using the app um, taking pictures and looking at the temperatures so rated one through four the smaller the number the I guess the better more user-friendly the camera so the top down TC view the only disadvantage here it doesn't come with an extension cable again not a big deal you can get your own cable um, image quality is very good and the app is very user friendly has all the features the min max the scale you can flip your image easy to take pictures so the software is I'd say the uh, easiest to use HIK micro mini unfortunately it gets uh, not a good score because the image was just not very sharp even though the resolution should be the same I guess the lens isn't very good especially if you're closer to something you couldn't even tell the difference between these double rings on, on my notebook uh, the software is decent second place uh, it does have that fusion feature I guess it can make cool pictures but you can't flip the image itself and well second place so a total of six points there infrared TS2 this yellow guy here with the manual lens that gets top marks for the hardware you can get super crisp infrared images up close or far away all you have to do is adjust the manual lens it takes a little bit of time but the images are really crisp unfortunately the app for the TS2 Plus is very primitive it does not have uh, the temperature min max you can't flip the image uh, doesn't show you the, the scale uh, maybe it's more for like outdoor use but you you do want to on the whole image you want to see at least a marker where it's the coldest where it's the hottest what the temperatures are because it can be very misleading you know something could be really hot or it could be one or two degrees warmer you you won't know you could just set up the manual pointer but that's that's kind of a pain so unfortunately the app there is in last place finally the infrared p2 pro the smallest i think they uh say this is the smallest infrared camera in the world which i guess is believable <laughs> um, the image quality without the macro lens up close it's not great uh kind of blurry uh, but if you use the macro lens and get you know pretty close to the object you can get a really nice crisp image however you have to you know put the lens on um, and it doesn't come with a nice case I guess you can keep it in this box but if it came with a nice zipper you know foam case like this it would be much nicer it does come with a cable so it gets three for the hardware and then the software again could use some more development there's no min max pointers on there um, but you, you can flip the image which is nice so six six points so overall if I'm in the field I want to grab a thermal camera and use it and get an answer on a vehicle I'm still going for the top down TC view uh, easy to use app and you get decent images far away and up close which is why it's uh, why it's my favorite the other three it's it's a toss-up it depends on your application if you want to get really crisp images and you don't care about the actual temperatures the TS2 plus is hands down the winner with the manual lens um, if you want to have a cool picture with fusion that you know from your phone camera and the infrared camera the only option is the HIK micro mini 2 and the P2 Pro, man, this thing is tiny. Uh, if you're really constrained on space, I guess uh, that would be the winner there. Uh, the prices for these, they're very similar. 
Some of them are on sale. I'll leave the links in the description. Um, so that's all I have. And for bonus footage, let's actually fix my bike because that voltage drop is gonna is drive me crazy. <laughs> I don't like hot wires. Uh, we'll look at the connections and then run it again and make sure they're staying staying cool. All right, let's take a look at some of these bulk connectors. They do look a little crusty, and I think that's because there's battery acid that leaked out here at some point, back when this thing had a lead acid battery. And yeah, that looks kind of bad. So the red positive wire is this one. Now all the white wires, they're coming from the alternator, and obviously, they're all going to heat up if you know they're making bad contact. So I'm going to undo all these bulk connectors. We'll clean them out. We'll also do the one on the one that goes to the battery, the red wire, on the other side. All right. So I'm just going to spray all these with the favorite deoxit, just where the pins are green. Some of them are still pretty okay. So we'll reconnect that one and that one. That one's good. That one's good. And just clean up all the pins. Blow them out. This is the worst one here. Ugh. All that crap coming off of there. Maybe I should put this in a drill. <laughs> do that. So let me clean everything up and we'll run the bike, do a voltage drop test. Alright, so on this side, I think the main issue with the charge cable, it's not green crusties, it's just that it's a really thin little crimp connector that just can't handle the current without heating up. So what I want to do is A, hook everything back up, run the bike, uh, make sure that the voltage drop is indeed just in this connector, and then what we can do is chop this off and install an eyelet and just screw it to the positive post of the starter solenoid and then you have a nice fat cable going to the battery no issues there so uh, let's do that alright so the modification that we're doing is I chopped off the male end of the uh, original push connector and that wire is now just going to feed my aftermarket cigarette lighter you know, power adapter so that's there and now I'm just soldering on an extension with an eyelet to the original wire and that's going to go right on this post on the starter solenoid. So let's finish soldering that up and we'll run the bike see what happens. Alright so here's what the final product look, look, looks like. There's the red wire, there's the main post. Let's run the bike. That wire isn't hot anymore. It's actually completely cool. <laughs> There's the wire. There's the cover. So we remove that voltage drop. I like it. Oh, that's 
Thanks, Maureen. that was fun voltage drop reduced by more than 50 percent and we learned something about thermal cameras very useful tools thanks all for watching we'll see you in the next one bye bye